Hey everyone, thanks for checking out Build XYZ. This is a three-part video series on building a Nixie clock from a kit. In this first video, I'm gonna show you where I source the kit from, and we're gonna get into the components that you will get and how to assemble the kit using the microscope over there to demonstrate. And then finally, we're gonna flash the stock firmware using the Arduino IDE. So by the end of the video, we'll have a working Nixie clock. So let's get started. <music> So if you'd like to follow along and build the same kit that I did and also upload the same firmware, the kit is from a eBay store called GRA and AFCH underscore two. I'll be sure to link these eBay stores in the description below. This is the exact kit that I have. So let's check out what I got in the mail. So there are approximately 150 parts here in this kit and you're gonna have to solder around 120 of those components yourself. You have your Nixie tubes, your printed circuit board, hardware parts, miscellaneous parts, resistors, transistors and ICs, capacitors, diodes, and headers. You will need to separately purchase two additional items. An Arduino, you can use an Arduino Uno or an Arduino Mega 2560, and a DC power supply at 12 volts and one amp. To do this project or to assemble the kit, you'll need, of course, a soldering iron. I have a microscope here. You do not need a microscope. Having a magnifying glass on a set of third hands would do just fine. I do have tweezers. I highly recommend. I don't think I can do this without tweezers. I also have a fume extraction fan here. It's not a very high-end one or anything, but at least it has a charcoal filter and it's able to suck away the fumes. I also have a steel wool tip cleaner, which I use between like, every component to clean my tip. And like that, we're gonna get started. So they give you this bill of materials. I highly recommend using this bill of materials as a checklist. Go through and mark off components as you put them down. R1, you can see R1, there are 25 of them. Those are 150 ohm resistors, so let's go ahead and place some of those. All right, so let's go ahead and solder R19. R19 is right there. And I like to use lots of solder flux. The flux that comes inside of solder is just, it's just not enough. It's below the joint. And then here, we're just going to put down, make it flat first, there we go. Center it, and we're just gonna put a little bit of solder. And I'll just clean this one off so you guys can see it. I usually do like five and then I'll clean them off with rubbing alcohol. And then when the board's all done, I use flux remover, which is kind of a nastier chemical, but I do it outside. There, that's enough solder. You just wanna make sure you don't put too much solder. That's it. Okay, so we're gonna put down C7 here. C7 is a tantalum capacitor, and I'll show you here the markings on it. So it's polarity sensitive. The markings here on the right side, that's the positive marking, and they've labeled on the silk screen a little positive sign here. So it goes on like this.
So let's just go and clamp this in a jig just so it's a little bit easier to work with. You're just gonna line it up so that the, the numbers face forward. It's all wobbly like this at first. You're just gonna use two thicks spacers to get the right height from the LED underneath. So the objective to tacking them all down is that you can still adjust them. Each one is tacked at three different points, so they're, they're still rigid, right? But if you run your eye down them or a straight edge like I will, you'll see that you can still adjust them. For example, this one can still be moved in this direction. If I heat up this pin, see? And when I let it go, it'll become rigid again. So the idea is to get them in the ballpark, use toothpicks to space them off the PCB, and then fine tune them so that they look straight to the eye. So after you have downloaded the Git repo, you can unzip it. The first thing you're gonna do is copy these five libraries over to uh, documents, Arduino libraries, or anywhere where your local Arduino ID stores its libraries. You need these specific versions because they've made changes to them. And then you're going to go into source code, hardware version 2.0, and get this sketch here, this top level folder with these three files. If you change the name of the folder, it won't matter. Arduino will prompt you and rename it. It has to be named specifically uh, to match the sketch name. So once you've created that folder, um, I like to open it up in another folder so that I can basically make changes on my local disk. You can double click it. There we go. And so this is the main sketch. So now any changes you make here will affect how the clock works. So you can actually make your own changes now. But for now, we're just going to compile it. Make sure it compiles first. So it does compile. And then make sure you have the right serial port selected. So there, mine has a check mark here. And if you're having a resource um, busy issue or anything like that, make sure no other program has locked or is having a lock on that serial port and free it up. And then you're gonna click upload. And that'll let you know it's done. That wraps up this first video on building a Nixie clock. In the second and third parts in this series, we're gonna be looking at adding features to the firmware and also building a custom case. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.